Since 7 o'clock last night in State College, Pennsylvania, we have had upwards of three inches of rain, and there is no sign of it ending anytime soon. So as a result, this afternoon's Iowa-Penn State game will largely be a running game. Cedric Shaw and Tavian Banks for Iowa, and the 225-pound sophomore from Penn State, Curtis Ennis. These runners will be at a premium today. Welcome to Beaver Stadium in University Park, Pennsylvania. It's the Iowa Hawkeyes and the 10th ranked Penn State Nittany Lions. And this game has bowl implications for both teams. Iowa with wins over Michigan State and Indiana. The Hawkeyes are just one of three teams undefeated in the Big Ten. Penn State has little margin for error. Hi again, everybody. I'm Charlie Steiner along with Rodney Gilmore. And we wish we could say it's a beautiful day for football. It most decidedly is not. But Iowa is indeed sitting pretty, averaging 29 points per game so far this season with some potent offensive weapons. Well, you mentioned the great running back, Cedric Shaw and Tavian Banks, but they've got a pretty good quarterback, too. Matt Sherman loves to play against Penn State, had a big game against them last year, 374 yards. He could have a good game today, but the weather could be a factor. It's wet and cold. Last year in Iowa City, Wally Richardson engineered two late fourth quarter drives and a 41-27 win. But the senior quarterback is playing with a different supporting cast this year. Well, last year he had Freddie Scott and Bobby Ingram, two great receivers that went on to the NFL. This year he's playing with an inexperienced group and an inexperienced offensive line. Oh, and the coaches. Between them, 66 years of head coaching, 137 years of living, and 501 career victories. Whether or not, here we come. Even though we had three inches of rain since 7 o'clock last night, the field remained covered until about an hour and a half ago. Give you some idea of how much rain was being removed from the field on top of that tarp. It's 48 degrees and a wind of about 20 miles an hour. It's a miserable day. How is this going to impact on both of these teams, Rod? Well, so far, Charlie, the footing looks pretty good, and I think that the pass rush will be affected by both teams because it's tough to get good tracking when the rain is like this. Quarterbacks ought to be able to throw the ball until it gets really wet and soggy and heavy. All things being equal, for 90 minutes of a torrential downpour, the field is in pretty good shape. Iowa won the toss, and a growing sign of things in college football they deferred so they're going to let Penn State proceed. Chafee Fields and Kenny Watson are standing deep. And we are underway. Brian Hurley's kick. It's Kenny Watson to about the 26 yard line where Penn State takes over first and ten. The quarterback is Wally Richardson, the running back, Curtis Ennis, 225-pound sophomore. He is the Nittany Lions leading rusher and receiver. Joe Juravicious back after missing last week, benched by Joe Paterno for missing classes. And up front, keep your eye on Joe Glick, 6'6", 336-pound true freshman. And this is the first play from scrimmage out of the eye. Ennis is the tailback. We're going to see a lot of him today. And he picks up about seven on the first carry of the afternoon. Iowa defensively, they play a 5 2, and their defensive end, number nine, Bill Ennis Eng, 6 5, 245 pounder. He's a senior, one of Iowa's captains, five sacks on the season. Last week's Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week was Matt Hughes with 12 tackles, two sacks, a pick, a forced fumble. And at the corner, Tom Knight has three interceptions this season, including one last week. On second down, Richardson is buried and just is able to get the ball away to Aaron Harris. It's incomplete third down. Well, that's been the bugaboo for Penn State all season long. The passing game has not been very good. We mentioned it at the top of the show. Wally Richardson has struggled this year. More interceptions this season than last year. As you see, Joe Paterno. Hoping to get a chance to pick up a first down here. Joe Paterno this year has 14 players, freshmen, who have already seen action. Most of Paterno line. Third down, about three. And that's going to be a first down for Aaron Harris and that's up. Aaron Harris down to the 20-yard line. Last week, 
He broke one for 49. Ennis ends with the touchdown saving tackle, a pickup of 47 for Aaron Harris. It's just going to be a simple draw play. He's right here. He's going to draw, take a step, get up here, watch the official. The official's going to have the best shot at making the play. He's going to knock him around a little bit. Watch Harris right now. Gets a great block. There's the official in the way. He's going to knock him out of the way and just rumble along his way, Charlie. Kerry Cooks, the safety, had a chance to make the tackle and could not. And then Harris broke it big for 47. But that time, Curtis Inge can't get out of his own way and loses a couple. Damian Robinson, the free safety, made the tackle. And you'll see a lot of tackles by Robinson when they get down to this area because they play man coverage down there, and he is the guy that they assign to the outside runs. His defensive coordinator, Bob Elliott, was telling me on the phone just the other day that he thinks Robinson may be the best free safety in the country. It is second and a dozen. Let's see if Robinson throws the ball. Now they're going to keep it on the ground. Nice spin move by Enos. To the 12. Flez Atkins, the right corner, makes the tackle. Short of the first down. Charlie, this is a play that's designed to go to the left side. Ennis Inge, I'm sorry, uh, Curtis Ennis gets a chance to pick where he wants to go, get the defense flowing to the right, and then he comes back to the left side. Good blocking on the left side of the line for him there. Picked up about nine, so it's third down and three. Ennis and Harris in the eye formation. First pass. It is complete to Ennis, and he will score. It is the first touchdown pass from Wally Richardson in the past four games. 6-0 Penn State. Well, Wally Richardson was looking to get back on track, and he certainly got off to a good start, dumping that pass off to Curtis Ennis in the flat. Just what his team needed. He needs to start getting a little bit more confidence in his players. He's been throwing the ball to Ennis a lot more lately. Brett Conway with his 112th consecutive PAT. Early in the first quarter, in the first possession, Penn State 7 to nothing on this 13-yard touchdown pass and run to Curtis Ennis. Stuff you can wear and by Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Well, the weather certainly had no impact on the Nittany Lions in their first series. A 47-yard run right up the gut by fullback Aaron Harris. Last week, he ran for 49 on a play. Set up the 13-yard touchdown pass and run from Robinson to Curtis Enos. Six plays, 74 yards in two minutes and 36 seconds. And the kickoff from Conway is out of bounds. So the touchdown drive by Penn State. Six plays, 74 yards. And now let's have a look at how Penn State took the lead, right? Well, take a look here. If you're an outside linebacker, you're Bill Ennis engine, you've got a tough job. You've got to hit the tight end, and then you have to cover the back. That's not an easy thing to do if you're an outside linebacker. And they put him in a bind, and Penn State takes advantage of it. You see he goes right after Enos, and he needed to go flat down the line of scrimmage, takes a poor angle. Curtis Enos gets outside for a touchdown. Curtis Enos beat Bill Ennis Inge. And so here is Iowa. It's first play from scrimmage. Down 7 0. At their own 35 after Conway's kick went out of bounds. Tavian Banks circles left in first down to about the 47 yard line now let's meet the Iowa offense Cedric Shaw's got ribs that are banged up ankles that are bruised and a thumb that's broken and that's why you just saw Tavian Banks but the wide receiver is somebody I know you're going to like Tim Dwight he's only 590 returns kicks punts 
And he's also the Hawkeyes leading receiver and up front Ross Verba is the offensive team captain. He's by far their best offensive lineman and they like to run left as you saw that in the first play from scrimmage. A pickup of 12 first and 10 Iowa at their own 48 yard line. That's Sherman and Banks is open into Penn State territory to the 46 yard line. Nice play action fake by Matt Sherman. That first running play sort of, sort of set this up. You see the pulling of the offensive lineman to the left side. Penn State goes with it, and Banks just slips out of the backfield. Really messed up the coverage for Penn State. Banks out in the flat. Good job by Sherman to get the ball to him. A pickup of six. It's second down and four at the Penn State 46. And we're seeing an awful lot of offense and awfully bad weather early. Sherman is calling it off. That's Banks on the delay, short of the first down by a couple. Let's meet the Penn State defense. Up front, Brandon Noble is a name I think we're going to talk about a lot today. He's tied for the team lead with four sacks. Outside linebacker is Andre Collins. He also has four sacks. He is one of 19 kids, and he is the fifth Collins child to play football at Penn State. The left corner is Brian Miller. He leads the Lions with three INT. So it's third down and two for the Iowa Hawkeyes at the Nittany Lion 44 yard line. And that is Aaron Collins, number six. Full house backfield. Banks is tailback. Handoff to Aaron Granquist. He is very close to the first down. It'll depend on the mark. Oh, Charlie, that's a heck of a statement by Iowa when they feel that on, on a third and two. They can give the ball to the fullback, Granquist, and power over you for the first down. And he got the first down. The offensive coordinator is Dan Patterson. He is a mustachioed man. You see talking into his headset there. There, there he is, yep. right there. And Bob Elliott is the man closest. You want to circle Bob? There's Bob. Nice job. How you doing, Bob? First and 10 for the Hawkeyes at the Nittany Lions, 42. Sherman, a little one-step drop, and it's in and out of the hands of Debo Odoms. That was a catchable ball, but it got there in a real hurry. Well, and they were picking on the wrong side. Brian Miller, number 34, is the cornerback to that side for Penn State, and he was all over Demo Odoms. There was no chance to get that play going. I mean, we're talking about a guy who is an NFL cornerback. He's going to be playing on Sundays right. next year. <laughs> A 5'9", 183-pound senior out of Denora, Pennsylvania. Michael Berger in the backfield with Tavian Banks. And that is Dwight in motion. And here's Banks. Gets out of bounds at the 39, picks up about three. It was Aaron Collins who ran him out. That play was dead in the backfield. And Banks just put on a move to save some lost yardage. You, know, you talk about running backs who need to make guys miss. And Tavian Banks did at that time the save yards. Watch the move he puts on right now. You'll see it right there on Lee. He takes Sean Lee to the cleaners right away. Nice stutter step, gets outside, picks up a lot more than he should have. Little wonder Tavian Banks averages over six yards per carry in his career. Third and seven at the 39. Here's Sherman, six-step drop. Incomplete, it was intended for Demo Odoms. It was about six inches too long. Well, he had him out there, Charlie. The problem was Matt Sherman didn't put enough air under, underneath the ball. He just needed to put it out there and let Odoms run underneath it. He threw it a little bit too hard. You'll see there's a lot of area out here. They're playing a two-deep two deep kind of zone, and Sherman's gonna drop back, and he's just not gonna have enough underneath the ball. There's Odom coming across. Look, he throws almost a bullet. Float it out there and let him run underneath it. Nick Gallery on to punt it away. Oh, that's a high fly ball to straightaway center field, and it is bouncing into the end zone. So Penn State will take over after holding Iowa scoreless on their first series of play. So Penn State with a 7-0 lead. And their second possession of the day, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Enos the tailback, the rain continues to fall. 
Richardson's pass is complete to Keith Olsom the tight end. And it appears as if it's got the first down. Much more college football coming your way on ESPN2 later on. Primetime doubleheader at 6. Mississippi takes on SEC foe number 7, Alabama. And then at 9 p.m., Steve Sarkeesian looks to lead number 18, BYU, over Tulsa. Much more college football coming up later today on the Deuce. So Penn State got the first down at the 30-yard line. Enos and Jason Sloan are in the I formation. Sloan is the up back. Enos is the tailback. Enos steps over one blocker and picks up about six on the play. Damian Robinson, the free safety, made the tackle. Well, the offensive line for Penn State does a nice job of firing out, but there's nothing complicated about what they're doing here. Just watch it. Just straight on blocking, a little zone blocking, nothing fancy. That's because they've got a younger, inexperienced offensive line. No pulling guards, no tackle traps, nothing like that. Fire out, beat up your man, and pick up good yardage. They may be young, but they've got the job done so far today. Barry Tilchin, center, is the most experienced on that offensive front. Second and four, 36. Enos brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Damian Robinson. Once again, we're calling his name a lot. Well, he's going to have to be very supportive of the run, and he was on that play. Penn State's offensive line was not able to do a great job. You see the numbers on Damian Robinson, 45 tackles, four picks this season. As you mentioned, a great player. That Penn State offensive line lost two players last year to the NFL that were first-round picks. Third down and six at the 34. Penn State is two for two in third down situation so far today. Richards is going to throw. Incomplete. So it will be fourth down. And the punt from Daryl Kenia will be on his way. That is the defensive coordinator for Iowa, Bob Elliott. Please with the work of his team. Well, that time, Charlie, I thought Wally Richardson should have run that ball, should have scrambled. He looked like he had enough room to pick up the first down, but didn't do it, and now Penn State has to punt. Daryl Kenia. Pretty good kick, isn't it? Sending Dwight back to the 18. And Dwight has some room. Hello. <laughs> the last thing in the world we expected when we got up this morning and saw snowflakes and then driving rain and wind was a high scoring wide open football game. Yeah, but what we did expect was Tim Dwight to do something outstanding. Everybody you talk to says that this guy is a great player. Every coach wants to have him on his team. The Penn State coaches were talking about him, raving about him, and you just saw why. Tim Dwight grew up in Iowa City, never left town, and nearly and dearly a hometown favorite. We are tied at seven as Zach Bromert knocks it through. Tim Dwight. Here it comes. Yeah, watch what he does out here. He's going to get a couple of nice blocks, but watch the move to get to the outside. Good punt returners always think in terms of getting outside, and he just outran everybody with great speed. This is a guy who scored 80 touchdowns in high school. You see why. And look at the coaching staff in the warm and dry booth looking at their guys. So we got ourselves a football game, don't we? Yeah, that, that man right there is a great special teams player, not only in returning kicks, but in making tackles on special teams. The one name we keep hearing when they talk about Tim Dwight is Steve Tasker. Yeah. A great special teamer in the NFL with the Buffalo Bills. Tim Dwight is a lot like that. About his size, too, 5'9", 190, and he can run. Joe Pa, not happy about that special teams breakdown. Brian Hurley is on to kick it off. Well, Charlie, yeah, we were talking yesterday about how this game is pretty evenly matched. Iowa felt very confident coming in here. 
It's a big game for both teams. All implications, even though it's relatively early in the Big Ten season. This is Kenny Watson. It's Watson's turn. And Watson gets it across the 25 out of bounds at the 30 yard line. Catch NFL Countdown tomorrow morning. Boomer the boys start your day the right way. How Jimmy Johnson has turned Terrell Buckley into a brand new player down in Miami. And how can the Atlanta Falcons ever turn their fortunes around? Find out tomorrow morning on NFL Countdown, 11.30 Eastern Time. Hopefully, it is a lot more warm and toasty than it is here where you are. Oh, but it's hot on the field. They're lighting it up down there. First and 10 at the 31. Richardson's going to throw long sideline. And it's complete to Jurevicius. And that's first down. Uh, Penn State did a nice job of pass protection on that play. They did a better job last year when they had guys like this, Charlie, Jeff Hastings, Hardings, I'm sorry, Andre Johnson, Keith Conlon, Marco Rivera. All those guys moved on to the NFL. Rivera is a backup at Green Bay these days. Got a couple first round draft picks on that front line for Penn State. For a long time. Here's Enos. With the spin move, he gets into Iowa territory at the 49. Uh, this guy has been talked about all season as a great talent. Watch what, as he shows you the great ability here as he gives you a nice move. He's going to make a nice spin to get back inside. Look, nothing outside. Ennis Inge out there turns it back inside, and he picks up an extra four or five yards with that spin move, Charlie. Curtis Ennis came into the game as Penn State's leading rusher and receiver. Second and five at the Iowa 49. Aaron Harris joins Enos in the backfield. This is Enos brought down at the 41 by Damian Robinson. And Damian Robinson brought him down, but Peter Marzik, the tackle over there, did a great job getting him to the outside. I mean, when you get your offensive lineman out in front of you, trap blocking and leading you around here that will help you a great deal watch what's going to happen you'll see Ennis get in behind Marsick as he comes out there he is he's going to clear out that side great block right there springs Ennis for a first down at the 41 Richardson throwing sideline incomplete intended for Chris Campbell second and ten Here's Hayden Fry, a very good friend of Joe Paterno's. He and Joe Pa spend quite a bit of time talking about football and improvements they can make in the college game. Between them, 501 career victories. 66 years of big time head coaching in college football. Second and 10 at the 41. Enos. Across the 40 to about the 37. Damian Robinson again with the tackle. Well, Which thing he's on the field or Iowa's well, in big trouble. Yeah, well, you know what's going on here is that Iowa is trying to force Penn State to throw the ball. So they're putting seven, eight guys up front to try and stop the running game. But right now, Penn State is dominating at the line of scrimmage. So Robinson's going to make tackles, but they're going to be down the field. Just had a look at uh, the defensive coordinator for Iowa, Bob Elliott. His dad was the former athletic director at Iowa, Bump Belly. Enos is flanked out to the left side. Richardson looking right. Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage by Jared DeVries, big number 94 out of Arlington, Iowa. Yeah, and Wally Richardson wanted to throw that time against Tom Knight. And you'll see Tom Knight just was all over him. He just couldn't get that ball in there. Knight's a great corner. Watch what you'll see here. Richardson looking, looking, looking. Same guy, but right now you'll see the ball knocked down by DeVries. So on fourth down, Daryl Kenia is on to punt. Kenia did not play last week. He was out with a sprained ankle. And how he sprained the ankle just drove Joe Paterno crazy. A little pooch kick. That will be knocked down at about the 12. Kenia 
sprained his ankle before the Purdue game last week, practicing field goals, which is something he doesn't do and isn't supposed to do. I think he learned his lesson. <laughs> Iowa's leading rusher in school history is Cedric Shaw, but he has not seen any action today because he has bruised ribs, a sprained ankle, and a broken left thumb. But Iowa hasn't missed a beat with Tavian Banks, who has a career rushing average of six yards per carry. And he has been very solid here in the first quarter. Sherman throwing long. Demo Adams unable to hold on at the 40-yard line. Mike Adamley, what's going on? Well, Charlie and Rod elsewhere in the Big Ten, Indiana facing number 13, Michigan. Scott Dreisbach going back to pass, but he is picked off by free safety Eric Allen, who goes the distance 37 yards in all. It is 7-7 in the second quarter. Guys? David pulls even with Goliath early. And here we're tied at seven. Five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. That was Penn State defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky. And his defense has caused some confusion for the Iowa offense. And Iowa is going to call its first time out of the half. Jerry Sandusky. He's got his hands full today with Tavian Banks. Tavian Banks and Shaw, when they're both healthy, are a tremendous tandem, Charlie. See what they have done combined this season. 89 yards a game for Cedric Shaw, 75 for Banks, averaging over five yards a carry. Look at the seven touchdowns for Tavian Banks. He's had two games in which he scored three touchdowns apiece. But Shaw, as we mentioned, has bruised ribs, some torn cartilage in the ribs, a sprained ankle, and a broken left thumb. So he is standing out in the rain and watching his teammate Tavian Banks get the job done. Banks broke his left arm in the fifth game of last season and missed the rest of the year. But so far this year, Banks has done a terrific job. Banks from Bettendorf, Isle. Uh, you know, all the injuries here give credence to what the Big Ten coaches tell us. It's tough to get through the season with one featured back, which is why you see teams like Wisconsin running three backs. Iowa, two. Hayden Fry is happy to have Tavian Banks backing up Cedric Shaw. 67-year-old Hayden Fry. Matching wits with 69-year-old Joe Paterno. And both men say they love coaching more now than they did 5, 10, 15 years ago. Sherman throwing long over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Chris Knipper. Well, and Matt, that was a catchable ball. Yeah, now Matt Sherman is one out of five right now. That's a second drop pass in a row. And you'll see he just has plenty of time, does a nice job of putting air underneath the ball against the two deep coverage. Finds his tight end right over the middle. There is the ball. Just drops it. Knipper just couldn't come up with it. Matt Sherman knows his guys have got to come up with some of those. So third and 10 for Iowa at their own 14-yard line. A couple of potential big plays ruined by drops. And Sherman is calling an automatic. Sherman takes a pounding at the 21-yard line, but about three yards short of the first down. Well, he had the sideline there, but he opted not to take it. Instead, also had the sideline microphone. Hit. Yeah. Ouch. So on fourth down, Nick Gallery's going to punt it away. It's a low kick, fielded by Campbell. He's got some room. And finally run out of bounds at the 47-yard line of the Nittany Lions. They take over first and 10. It's a 42-yard punt with a 12-yard return by Campbell. Penn State is in good field position. Charlie, and we haven't seen a lot of trouble with the footing right now on the field. Players have not been slipping around, so the field certainly is handling the rain very well, but we have seen drop passes. It started raining and raining heavily here last night about 7 o'clock, and in the past 20 hours, we've had three inches of rain. First and 10, Penn State at the 48. Enos. You're not going to tackle him around the shoulder pads. 
That's a first down and then some to the Iowa 40. Uh, Phil Ostrowski, number 64, one of the guards for Penn State, did a nice job of blocking up front. And that was really what helped spring Ennis, Ennis on this run. Right here, you'll see the great block right in the middle of the screen with 64, Ostrowski. And if you don't wrap up Ennis, he's going to continue to roll on you. You've got to get in front of him and wrap him up. But the man who made it happen that time was Phil Ostrowski. Chris Eberly is now the tailback. And Richardson scrambles and gains maybe a yard or two. Bill and his in made the tackle number nine. Well, if there's one criticism of Wally Richardson, it's that he doesn't scramble very well. He's a big guy, 220 pounds, 6'2", 6'3". That doesn't scramble out of the pocket very well. He was looking downfield, did not see this, did not see his man wide open in the middle. Nastasi, number 21, wide open. Shades of Tom Matty in <laughs> Super Bowl three. Earl Morrill, throw it to me. You are dating yourself. <laughs> the only one will go out with me. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 39. That is Enos. To the 23 and a first down, a pickup of 16. Yeah, it's easy to run that way when you get great blocking up front. You run a draw play, you're going to get a big hole here. Watch the block here, right in there by the fullback slow. Going to open it up for Ennis. Right now, there is big block on Hughes, and the hole was so wide open that Curtis Ennis was able to just walk right through it. First and 10. That's a mismatch early on on the ground, isn't it? At the 24. Everly. Trips and falls as he was looking ahead, and he saw nothing but pay dirt in front of him. Well, again, Charlie, we talked about this offensive line, about it being inexperienced. This is only the second game in which this group of five linemen have played together. Well, you wouldn't know it by their performance. They're firing out and dominating Iowa up front right now. But Iowa defensively is susceptible to the run. You well, can we can run at them and through them. Uh, Michigan State ran pretty wild over them a couple of weeks ago. First to 10 at the 18. Well, that play didn't fool anybody. John LaFleur makes the tackle on Enos. Well, that's one of the answers to the great running game. You start stunning your linemen, getting them into the backfield, and that's what Iowa's doing right now. In addition, they are starting to bring their linebackers closer to the line of scrimmage, risking the blitz a little bit more since they're closer to their own end zone. The defensive coordinator. That's Bob Elliott again. He's the one that is trying to make sure that his team can get in the right position to stop the running game. Elliott was a five beta capo when he went to school at Iowa. The pass is incomplete. Intended for the tight end Keith Olsimer and that will set up a fourth down situation What's Joe ball. Paul gonna do? Well, I think he's probably gonna give it a field goal shot wouldn't you right here I mean you're in the middle of the field. You got to find out what it's really like well, But Brent it's Conway like is on the field And he is their place kicker. Yeah. I mean there's a pretty good wind and a lot of rain coming down right now This is not an automatic one even though it's not very far. It's only about a 36 yard attempt Right down the middle. But it is windy. 10-7 Penn State. On the field goal by Brett Conway. It's a wet afternoon. As Joe Paterno and Aiden Fry, they've been down this road before. Oh, I'd say a few times. That drive was kept alive by the big draw play that we saw earlier in which Slow does a nice block and Enos was able to pick up a lot of yardage to pick up a first down. That kept it alive for them. First half. Well, maybe we'll do that one a little bit later, Charlie. It really was a wonderful play. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can see it in my mind's eye right now.
last year, Penn State at Iowa. Matt Sherman had a big day. Throwing for 374 yards, including a touchdown pass to Tim Dwight. But two touchdown passes from Wally Richardson to Bobby Ingram. And Penn State came from behind 41-27. That at Iowa City last year. And now the Hawkeyes receive the kick. And here is the aforementioned Tim Dwight. He's not afraid, is he? That's why coaches love him. He just flies around on the field. Doesn't matter whether he's carrying the ball or trying to make a tackle. Out to the 20 where Iowa takes over first and 10 down by three. Now keep in mind that Matt Sherman, although he hasn't completed many passes, has pretty much been on the money. His receivers, however, have dropped long passes when they've been wide open. Demo Odoms has dropped a couple and Chris Knipper dropped one. And Tavian Banks and Michael Berger are in the I formation behind Sherman, first and 10 at the 20. That's Dwight in motion. And here's Banks. Banks picks up about five. Kim Herring, the free safety, made the tackle. Number three, Kim Herring, second down. And Hayden Fry relishes these matchups with Joe Paterno. They've coached against each other for a few years now since Penn State has joined the Big Ten. And, and he really likes Joe Paterno. Genuinely has a lot of affection for him. Well, they're both members of AARP. <laughs> you Banks, said four that. carries, 23 <laughs> yards. again across the 35 to the 37 and again the free safety Kim Herring made the tackle but take a look at what they're seeing here we're seeing a two deep coverage here they're spreading them out across the field receivers there receivers tight end here so they're fo focusing up there now when you have them spread out like that it's easy to line block them and push them out and pick up the draw play you'll see they're so spread out across the field Nice job up front. The secondary is not in position to come up and support the running play. Dwight flanked to the top of the screen. Demo Odoms to the bottom. First and ten. Pitch out. Tavian Banks just gets a couple. So Tavian Banks has been a busy man this afternoon. What with the accumulated injuries to Cedric Shaw. Uh, he was busy, but he was also sat upon that time as you see his numbers 36 yards today six carries that's a little bit better than his average no actually that is his career average six yards per carry on the season he's averaging five and a half yeah second and eight at the 39 banks and Berger are split Tavian banks across the 45 yard line about a yard and a half short of the first down well, regardless of whether Iowa picks up a first down here, this has been a good drive for them as we air near the end of the first quarter. They are able to get in a position where they can kick the ball away and pin Penn State down if they have to. The game is infinitely better than the weather. The Nittany Lions leading by three after one. It's too bad it's not a bright, sunny fall afternoon because the foliage here in State College, Pennsylvania is spectacular. Yeah, look at that, 96,000, but no umbrellas. They're no. not allowed. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> well, you're under a roof. On third and short, Michael Berger, the up back, looks to be a hair short for Hayden Fry's team. We'll take a look on the measurement. I remember back in the first quarter, they had a third and two, and they went and picked it up by running the ball right at them. This time, they don't pick it up. And it looks like Hayden Fry is thinking about going for it. I don't think that's a good thing to do right here. And I'll tell you why, Charlie. They just got stuffed, and they're in their own territory right now. And Penn State's been able to move the ball. Go ahead and kick the ball and pin them down. Don't risk it right now. Well, Tavian Banks and Michael Berger are in the backfield. Berger, the 230-pound lead back. Sherman doesn't like what he sees, and he is going to spend a timeout. Iowa has just one left here in the first half. 
10-7 Penn State. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, and by DirecTV, satellite TV at its best. So Hayden Fry has had a change of heart. On fourth and one, he is going to punt it away, and he got Nick Gallery back at his own 30-yard line. Gallery is the leading punter in the Big Ten. He's got a big foot. Knocks it out of bounds right at the 21 yard line. First quarter statistics. It is a good thing Tim Dwight ran it back 82 yards. By the way, that was the first touchdown punt return against Penn State since Derek Alexander had one for 43 yards for Michigan back in 1993. This is the Tim Dwight. 82-yard punt return that has provided Iowa its only offense in the afternoon. Well, you talk about a guy with a burst. He burst into the outside and got into the end zone. Enos and Sloan in the eye formation. First and 10 and 21. And there's all sorts of movement on the offensive line. Charlie, you wonder if the weather is starting to take some sort of toll on people in their decision-making right now. The last 12 plays, only one pass by the two teams combined. Those pick skins are damp. The referee is Steve Newman. And he just flagged Iowa for being offside, which is the first penalty of the day. And Wally Richardson caught that one that time by forcing the snap count a little bit faster when he saw Iowa jump. He's a very smart quarterback. They were telling us yesterday that he will always do what they need. So it's first and five for Penn State at their own 26. Leading by three early second quarter. Richardson throwing, overthrowing Enos at the 40. Let's go to the studio and Mike Adamley. Mike? Charlie and Rod, some rumblings from the big house in Ann Arbor, Indiana. Jumps on top of the Wolverines, courtesy of this three-yard touchdown run by Alex Smith, number 23. 14-7, Indiana. The Hoosiers had lost 11 straight Big Ten games. The Hoosiers 0-3 on the season in the Big Ten, 2-4 overall. And every once in a while, David gets a shot at Goliath. Enos to the 30, about a yard short of the first down, picked up four. Usually Goliath is stumping all over David, but David seems to be rising up today back in Michigan. The guy who's rising up here is Curtis Enos. Matt Hughes made the tackle. Curtis Enos, 6'1", 225-pound sophomore from Union City, Ohio. He is the Penn State offense. Well, you wonder how he got away from Ohio State. And he left the state of Ohio to come to Penn State, and you got to believe the folks in Buckeye land aren't happy about it. What was a drizzle a few moments ago has become a very heavy rain again. Aaron Harris looks like he's got the first down. And I don't know how to break it to you folks, but I'm seeing a couple of snowflakes. Oh, great. Just what we need here, huh? This is your kind of weather, though, Charlie. I mean, a little rain turning into snow, really cold. You're not even wearing a jacket. Man. This is football weather. Should be told that Rodney was born and raised and lives on the West Coast. And if he sees even cloudy skies, he runs for the mittens. And I have him on. First and 10, Penn State at the 33. Richardson. Dumps it, and he completes it. First down. Well, one of the problems that Penn State has had this year is getting their receivers off the line of scrimmage. Right now, you'll see Jurevicius do a nice job against Plez Atkins of getting inside, and he's a big target for Richardson. 6'5", 225 pounds. Once he gets inside, that's an easy throw for Wally Richardson to make. Jurevicius did not play last week sat it out for disciplinary reasons after skipping classes. Yeah, Joe Paternal told him that if he missed another class, he'd sit him down. And then Juravicius didn't believe him. 
<laughs> well, he found out the hard way, didn't he? Yeah. First and ten, Penn State at the 43. Richardson with a lot of time, and it's dropped by Curtis Enos at the 39-yard line. And I tell you what, this wet football is beginning to take its toll on these receivers. Well, that's the problem. It's not the footing. It's that the ball is getting so wet. The rain is coming down so hard that in between the time you covered with the towel, when you line up to the line of scrimmage and take the towel off and the quarterback gets it, it is almost soaking. You see they're covering it right now to keep it dry. Well, by the time they snap it, it's raining so hard, it's going to be slippery again. The ball is heavy and slick. Second and 10 at the 43. Harris and Enos are split. Tussie is the man in motion. Enos. Tackled from behind by Jared DeVries, number 94. DeVries at 260 pounds is cat quick. And he's cat quick, great present, strong man. He comes crashing down from the outside, makes a lot of plays for this team. Hasn't quite decided on his major yet. Young man from Appleton. A great high school running back ran for over 4,700 yards. There is a fumble, and I think Iowa has it. And guess who? Matt Hughes, the man who was the Big Ten Player of the Week for defense, just made another big play for Iowa. And we talked about the weather, Charlie, and its effect on the ball game and the slippery ball. Look what happens here. Bad Richardson snap. never gets the ball up to him. And Matt Hughes, who was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week last week with the fumble recovery. He had one last week. He's got one this week. And it is starting to rain even harder now, Charlie. And it is amazing that there are 90,000 people here sitting in it. And it's cold. First and 10. Iowa with the ball at the Nittany Lion 45. That didn't fool anybody. Michael Berger loses about four on the play. Brandon Short and Brandon Noble combine on the tackle. Well, let's find Brandon Short right here. Watch how he's going to be the man that winds up in the backfield chasing it down to make the play. Iowa will pull their guards, and all he does is get right in behind them and run down that play. Second and 14 at the 49. Sherman calling an automatic. Sherman is in a world of trouble. Unloads it, incomplete. Intended theoretically for the tight end, Chris Knipper. There is a flag on the play, however. Well, the Iowa offensive linemen were peeling back, trying to protect their quarterback, and I think they're going to get them for a hold or a clip back there. It is a hold. Well, Hayden Fry is wearing the hat today, and Joe Paterno has opted to go au naturel. Uh, Joe doesn't mind any of this stuff. And he shows no signs of slowing down in his 31st season as a head coach. Hayden Fry, he's got the hat on. He needs to be protected there. Last year, Hayden's team was penalized much too much. Nearly 10 a game. This year, the penalties are down. They did get nailed that time. Referee Steve Newman. On the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. Oh, that's a killer penalty from the spot of the foul. So it is second down, oh, roughly from State College to Phillipsburg. Yeah, yeah, it's forever. Banks in motion. Throwing long for Tim Dwight. He's got it. He's on his feet. Down at the four yard line. And that is a first down. Are you and kidding me? Up. I mean, they've got forever to go on this play, and the man of a moment for him, Tim Dwight, comes up big once again. A pickup of 61 yards. Here he is, right there in the slot. 
when they bring this man over here in motion, they're playing a 3D. What he's going to do is just run straight, and this man forces the corner over. What a great job. He doesn't run any fake at all. He runs straight down the field, splits the two defenders, and Sherman throws a great ball with a lot of air underneath it. Tavian Banks with Michael Berger and Aaron Brandquist in front of him in the backfield. First and goal at the four. Well, Michael Berger gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's really just about all. Jim Nelson, the linebacker, made the tackle. And Nelson's the top tackler on the Penn State team. They needed him on that play. Berger was the guy who was carrying the ball. Come back with the fullback here, cross action. You'll see Nelson right there step up and meet him head on. This is just a terrific game in absolutely miserable weather. Second and goal. Tavian Banks will score. And Iowa takes the lead. Verba and Matt Rischel on the left side of that line did a great job. Tavian Banks went into the end zone almost untouched. There you see the double block down by Verba and Rischel opening a huge hole for Banks to get into the end zone. It's been a while since I've seen a Penn State defensive line manhandled down around the goal line like that. And here is Zach Brummert for the extra point. It is 14-10 Iowa. The Hawkeyes came into this game a 10-point underdog, and they lead it by four. Dial six for long distance. An 82-yard punt return for a touchdown by Tim Dwight and a 61-yard pass completion to the aforementioned Mr. Dwight. Iowa is able to run it home. They lead 14-10. Penn State gets it out to about the 29-yard line. 22, Kenny Watson on the return. Kenny Penn Watson State. with the return. ESPN, Back much more college football coming up later today at 7 Eastern. East Carolina heads into a hurricane. Number 12, Miami. And then stay tuned, of course, throughout the day at 3.30 and then at 10 o'clock Eastern time for the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard Show. Busy day of college football. So Iowa, four plays, 45 yards, a 65-yard reception. Tim White set up the TD. Curtis Enos maybe lost a couple on the play, and Matt Hughes is there again. Well, Matt Hughes is allowed to roam inside. And I'll tell you something, Charlie. The cornerbacks for Iowa are doing such a great job of stopping the receivers one-on-one -on -one that it allows Hughes inside some freedom to make tackles. They don't have to worry about zone responsibility. It's just go after him, play football, tackle him. And the way he's playing today, he could be Defensive Player of the Week again. Second and 11 at the 28. Enos is the flanker. Harris, the single setback. That's Enos in motion up there. And there's Harris. And Harris is brought down at the 28-yard line. Matt Hughes was there again. Damian Robinson was there again. We're rounding up the same old suspects, aren't we? Oh, yeah. And again, you mentioned Damian Robinson. When that free safety is up there making those tackles, you know they're playing man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. And that's what Penn State's going to have to do. They're going to have to throw the ball outside the Juravicius or Nastasi to try and create some yardage. But the passing game has not worked all that well for Penn State this year. Third and nine. And that is why the offensive line is just not protecting Richardson well enough. Jason House was in on the sack. A walk-on two years ago. Now a backup defensive end at 225 pounds. Well, again, we're talking about man-to-man -man coverage, and they're free to blitz after that. They bring their guys from all over the field. We see Matt Sherman getting ready to come back on the field, but Wally Richardson was under a lot of pressure. Darrell Kenyon to punt it away. 
and Iowa has momentum and the lead on its side. A low punt. Fielded by Tim Dwight. Flag on the play. Flags all over the field. One of those illegal blocks in the back. Yeah, they're going to flag Matt Bowen for an illegal block. And I'm not sure he had to make that for Dwight to get to the outside either. Referee Steve Newman. That's Bowen. He is the guilty party. Uh, there he is right there. And, oh. uh, but maybe he did have to do it. <laughs> back in the back. During their turn on the return team. First down. We're going to take a break. Seven minutes, 21 seconds to go. First half. Iowa leading by four. 48 degrees, steady rain, and yet 75,000 or more are here at Beaver Stadium. Watching Iowa lead by four. Davian Banks picks up maybe a yard or two. Yeah, only a yard or two because Chris Snyder, number 91, stuffed that play at the line of scrimmage. Iowa has enjoyed life its own self in the second quarter, 61 to nine. But interestingly enough, Penn State <laughs> should be home. Well, he's got to do that. He doesn't have an umbrella. You can't bring one into the stadium. <laughs> should be home on a day like this. Davian Banks, nine carries, 49 yards here in the first half. Second and eight Iowa at their own 47. Sherman throwing sideline. Was that caught? No. Out of bounds. Intended for Damon Gibson. Well, that was a rainbow. And Matt Sherman didn't get much on that one. He might have had it tipped at the line of scrimmage. But again, he's trying to go deep. He's got his receiver wide open out there running a corner route. But that ball hangs in the air so long that it gives defensive backs a chance to get over. Brian Miller comes over, number 34, to get his hands on the ball, knock it away from Brad, from Ascari Adams. Third so down, a long eight. Iowa at their own 47. That's Banks in motion. Sherman is buried alive. Back at the 36-yard line. Well, Penn State came with the rear blitz, and Nelson got in there that time. Sherman didn't read the blitz. When he had the motion there, he thought he had man. I'm sorry, he thought he had a three deep coverage. Penn State did a good job of disguising it. Nelson waited to the last minute and then came on the blitz. Nelson leads Penn State with four sacks. That was his fourth of the season. That ties him with Aaron Collins for the team lead. Campbell. That is 25, cuts it to 30. And is able to get out to the 37-yard line, a return of 11 following the 38-yard punt by Nick Gallery. Tuesday through Saturday on the Deuce, it's NHL tonight. The hockey show for hockey fans. Bill Pito brings today's highlights and news of the NHL as well as all the special features around the NHL, 11.30 Eastern on ESPN2. to the 39. Matt Hughes made the tackle. Wally Richardson is the seemingly unflappable senior quarterback at Penn State last year with receivers like Bobby Ingram. He was doing awfully well. This year, look at that. Seven picks, only three last year. And only three touchdown passes this year. Well, here's Richardson with time. Sideline complete. Jura Vicious at the 50. Richardson does a nice job. He finds Iowa in a blitz. Here he is right here. You're going to see pressure coming up this side. He's going to drop back, take time, man-to-man -man coverage over here, and he'll read it 
and wait for Juravicious to run a comeback route. There you see the blitz. He'll stop, read it, waiting for Juravicious to come back to him, and he does. We talked about at the top of the show the difference in Richardson supporting Cam. He has had to be the leader. Good thing he's got Edis in the backfield with him. That time the handoff is to Aaron Harris, and he's still on his feet. And he's going to break it. Whenever Aaron Harris touches the ball, big things happen. But the officials are talking about it right now. Not even a face mask could bring him down. Oh. That incredible run. 49 yards. 49 yards last week. A 47-yard run earlier. And another 47 now. Aaron Harris. And he's a red shirt freshman. Well, he must like the rain. It must make him a little bit more slippery. I'll tell you what, it was a nice day against Purdue last week. Didn't stop him either. Now the extra point for Conway. 113 extra points in a row for Brett Conway. And Penn State regains the lead. Sometimes they say it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah. Sometimes it's even better to be lucky and good. Yeah, sometimes the ball is bouncing your way. Watch what happens here with Harris. He's going to keep running, keep moving, keep working. Penn State working with him. Ball comes out right there. The ball is down there. And what's going to happen? It's going to bounce right back up to him. Look at that. Bounces right back to him, and he continues on his way. Tim Dwight. is smeared at the 20. And that is Aaron Harris. After that 47-yard touchdown run. Four carries, 101 yards. Not a bad rushing average so far today, huh? Yeah, and it helps when the ball is bouncing right back up to you in mid-stride. I'm thinking about those old Duncan Imperial yo-yo commercials how you walk <laughs> the dog and put it down, comes right back up. Uh, yeah, he was walking the dog and walking the walk. Man. 17-14, Penn State. And we've got ourselves a fun game on a miserable afternoon at State College, PA. Sherman calling the automatic. He's got time. Now he's in trouble. Unloads it, and he completes it. The ball is fumbled. Penn State recovers. Brandon Noble, number 93. Well, this is an occasion when the wet field helped Penn State. The ball died on the sideline and didn't roll out when it probably ordinarily would have. Sherman was under a lot of pressure that time. He's going to try to make something happen and does a tremendous job of getting this pass off when Nelson comes in. And Odoms makes the grab, but he's going to lose it at the end. But the ball is going to stay in bounds. It's not going to go out. Watch what happens here. The wet turf doesn't allow the ball to run too fast, and Noble recovers it. Now, can Penn State capitalize? First and 10 at the 28. Richardson throwing toward the end zone for Enos. It's incomplete. Now let's go back a play, Charlie, and look at the fumble recovery. Odoms gets hit by Miller. Ball comes out. See if it stays inbounds. And it does. But you have to question a little bit from that angle. Did Noble have complete control of it before he went out of bounds? There was no real argument from the Iowa side. Second and 10 at the 28. Richardson is 5 of 13 so far today for 61 yards and a touchdown. Aaron Harris. Finally, Damian Robinson, like a wrestler at a rodeo, takes down his prey. Mike Adamley, what's going on? Well, Charlie, up in Madison, Wisconsin, Darnell Autry on the sidelines with a sprained right shoulder, so the Wildcats go to the air. Steve Schnur to Dwayne Bates, touchdown 14-13 Northwestern. Autry's condition will be checked at halftime.
Back here, 17-14, Penn State. Time running out on the first half, less than four minutes to go. Some pretty good ball games going on in the Big Ten this weekend, Charlie. Third and three. First down, Chris Everly. Down to the 13-yard line. How about Harris? Hey, he's been running the ball all day, but it's his turn to turn it over to a teammate. And what's he do? He takes on the blocking row. He's in the eye back position. He's going to lead right up in the hole, deliver a nice block. That's going to create the running room there. There you see the block. Nice cut back in there to pick up the yardage for Chris Everly. And Tom Knight gave Everly quite a lick at the end of the play, didn't he? First and 10. Penn State at the Iowa 13. Harris. Oh, Not this time. Oh. Boy, that Damian Robinson is playing tough, isn't he? Yeah, they put it on his shoulders today. They told him he was going to have to be a big factor in the running game. And he shows up big time there with a big hit on Harris. And he got some help from the strong safety, Kerry Cooks, as yeah, well. Wa watch him shoot right in here. Shows up right now. And when you see shoulder pads moving back like that, you know that's a big hit. That's 15. Cooks finishing off the play. No gain. Second and 10 at the 13 yard line. Enos and Sloan. That is Stussy in motion. Enos going the other way. Enos inside the 15 down to about the 11. Pick up of two. Third down and eight. Well, a good job by Ennis and just staying at home that time outside, forcing to play back in as we take a look at Harris on the sideline. Looks like he was banged up a little bit, Charlie. Or is having an equipment problem. No, I think it's a lot more than equipment. He is standing gingerly over there. Ennis and Sloan. In the backfield. For the end zone, it's incomplete. Overthrown intended for Nastassi, who is open in the corner. I think Wally Richardson just got a little bit excited there. He was looking to his right, came back to his left, and found his man wide open, and then he rushed himself. And so Brett Conway is on the field. This should be a relatively easy 30-yarder. Hash mark to the left. Nastasi is the holder. The kick is no good. Well, Iowa dodges a bullet, but there is a flag on the play. It was Iowa offside? Iowa was. Offside. Well, and so Iowa, Conway will get another shot. Yeah, talk about a shot. Okay. Iowa almost dodged a bullet when That's Conway Napa. misses this one. His Nastasi does a nice job of getting it down there, and now they're going to get a second shot at it because Iowa was offsides. Mm. Well, the Hawkeyes aren't out of the woods yet. Offside, defense, five yard penalty, repeat, fourth down. Those penalties have just been eaten at Hayden Fry. Fourth one of the day, 45 yards, and gives Penn State a chance now for a 25-yard field goal. Snap is much better, and so is the kick. So the penalty cost Iowa five yards and three important points. But Iowa did dodge a bullet when Wally Richardson wasn't able to come up with the touchdown pass to Nastasi in the end zone just a couple of plays ago, Charlie. And he had his man wide open and just didn't get it to him. They'll take a look at Wally Richardson under center. Now he's got time, plenty of time. Receiver wide open, Nastasi right there. And Richardson just got a little bit excited, a little pumped, and got the ball out in front of him too far. So Penn State, thanks to a fourth down offside penalty, gets a second chance on the field goal, and they make good on it a second time. Nittany Lions leading by six with a minute and 55 seconds 
left in the first half. And they've done Richardson. it on the ground. They've run 27 times and passed the ball only 14 in the first half. When Iowa gets the ball back for what will likely be their last possession of the first half, they will have only one timeout left. Well, and if you're Penn State, don't kick it to Dwight. That is Brett Conway. Richard Carter fails to get to the 20. But Charlie, we talked about that overthrown ball in the corner of the end zone. Look at the two Iowa defenders, Cook and Adkins, trying to figure out who messed up, who was supposed to have that guy, and Cooks is telling Adkins, it was your guy. You got to make that coverage. Well, you want to make sure guys are on the right page, but that ain't the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you're caught on television. No, you don't go punching your teammates in the end zone, <laughs> telling them to make the play. I mean, Atkins is not a rookie. He knows how to play the game. Well, I suspect there's going to be some discussion of that little shot back in Iowa City tonight, DeMar. That's Dwight in motion, flag on the play, hold everything. Yeah, they're going to be flagging uh, Iowa for jumping off sides. There was a little legal motion at that, that time by uh, Zaron Flemister. We told you. Uh, Dead ball. Let's start. Offense. That Iowa had all sorts of penalty problems last year, and they were improving their lot in life in that regard this year. Not so today. Coming up at halftime, the GMAC halftime report with Mike Adamley. Highlights of Indiana, Michigan, Northwestern, and Wisconsin, and an update on the World Series. It's raining. There and here. First and 15 for the Hawkeyes. Back at the 13, and that's Dwight in motion again. The handoff is to the up back. Aaron Granquist across the 25. And I'll mark it down at the 25-yard line. Kim Herring, the free safety, made the tackle. And watch the block by Bill Reardon, the center 63. He comes down and does a nice job of moving his man to the left side. Granquist cuts in behind the blocking there, picks up nice yardage. It continues to rain, not nearly as hard as it has, but it is miserable. Second and about seven. Again, the up back, Granquist. Maybe a yard on the play, third down and about two. I think Hayden Fry is thinking if they can pick up the first down running the ball, then great. Then they'll go into their hurry up offense, use their timeouts. But if they don't get the first down, he wants to make sure that they've burned enough of the clock so Penn State doesn't have a chance to come back. With that in mind, why doesn't Penn State call a timeout now? Third and one. Banks in motion. Well, they're going to throw for it. And they're going to complete it for a first down to Aaron Granquist. Gerald Filardi, the Long Islander from Huntington, made the tackle. First down and 10. Well, I think maybe now with only 35 seconds, it gives you a shot at maybe throwing downfield one or two times. But I don't think you want to take too many chances of simply putting the ball in the air on passes over the middle. If you're going to throw it, you got to start throwing it deep now. Clock is running. And about 20 seconds to go. Well, Sherman throwing on the run incomplete with seven seconds left. Yeah, and I don't think that's the kind of throw you want. Hey, it's too risky, particularly when you're throwing over near Brian Miller. Hey, number 34 for Penn State can pick off passes like that and take them back the other way. So I think Hayden Fry wants his quarterback to throw the ball away or you throw it down the field so that if it is picked off, it's nothing more than a punt. And on that play, you might as well go to the turf, put your knee, and let the uh, let the first half run out. Yeah, be done with it with seven seconds to go. I, I like it. We're coaching Hayden Fry and Joe Paterno. <laughs> <laughs> Should be the last play of the first half. It will be. Tavian Banks adds a few yards to his personal stats. 
And we have had a terrific first half. The weather notwithstanding, Penn State has a six point lead. It's 20 to 14 in University Park. Welcome back to our ESPN2 College Football Studios. This is the GMAC Halftime with Mike Adamley. Glad you could join us here in our ESPN2 College Football Studios. In addition to Penn State and Iowa, the game you were watching on ESPN2, a full slate of Big Ten contests, including Michigan, number 13 in the country, trying to rebound after that loss two weeks ago to Northwestern in Evanston. They're going against an Indiana team that had lost 11 consecutive Big Ten games. Early on, quarterback Scott Dreisbach intercepted by Eric Allen. He runs it back 42 yards. That tied the game at seven. Now, second quarter, Indiana driving again. What a surprise. The pitch to their super running back, Alex Smith. That put the Hoosiers on top, 14-7. And get this, folks, they now lead in Ann Arbor, 17-10 at halftime. The 42-yard interception return for a touchdown. Uh, the first since De that's in a long time, and IU's last win in Ann Arbor, 1967. Northwestern Wisconsin, the Wildcats, underdogs in Madison. There's one of the reasons why Paul Burton had the snap punt over his head. Bob Anderson or Adamoff recovered for the touchdown, but not to worry. The Cats have Darnell Autry on their side. He goes for 20 yards. That tied the game at seven. Now Autry has been taken into the locker room at halftime. They are checking on the status of a sprained right shoulder. Northwestern did get come back with a score. A touchdown pass, 12 yards. Steve Schnur to Dwayne Bates. They lead 14 to 13. The game is at halftime. And again, Darnell Autry's condition being checked up at halftime. In Lawrence, Kansas, number nine, Colorado taking on the Jayhawks. Remember a year ago, the Jayhawks upset Colorado out in Boulder. Would lightning strike twice? To Lawrence we go. First quarter action, no score. Second and goal for the Buffaloes. Coy Detner, play action pass. Complete to Desmond Dennis for the touchdown. That would be the only touchdown so far in the first half. Big play for Kansas. Isaac Bird, their wide receiver. A 58-yard punt return down the right sideline, but they could not capitalize because June Henley fumbled the ball in the red zone. Colorado recovered. They kicked the field goal, and they now lead 10-0 at halftime. Colorado has won eight straight on the road. West Virginia undefeated this season, leading Temple at halftime, but not by as much as everybody expected. 21-10 the score there. Almost zero away with 116 yards on 11 carries. North Carolina State and Virginia. Virginia tuning up for that big game next week in Tallahassee against Florida State. Yes, they are. Tiki Barber, we know what he can do on the ground. How about a punt return? Well, I can return these as well. He takes it up the middle at his own 27. Bounces to the outside. Nobody's going to catch him. 73 yards. Virginia had a quick 7-0 lead. They now lead 45-0 at halftime. Look at the numbers for the Barber of Seaville. Tiki Barber, 14 carries, 106 yard, and three touchdowns. Coming up on our GMAC halftime report, we'll go to the Big East and check out Boston College. Stay with us. This halftime report is presented by GMAC Smart Leafs. Want low in Big East play, Boston College and Rutgers in Chestnut Hill. Both teams looking for their first conference win. First quarter, quarterback Mac Hasselback hands to Mike Cloud. He'll go down the right side, 26 yards. Eagles up 10-0. Second quarter, BC on the three. Hasselback can't find an open receiver and takes it in himself. That put BC up 17-0. The score now 27-6 with 13-10 left to go in the third quarter. Vanderbilt and Georgia. Between the hedges, everybody's between the hedges nowadays in the Southeastern Conference. Number 14, Mike Bobo here, pitches to Patrick Pass, but he throws it incomplete to Heinz Ward. That set up a field goal. That made it 3-0 Georgia. This game now in the bottom of the seventh. Vanderbilt has countered with a safety. It is 3-2 at halftime. Arkansas on top of South Carolina, 10-0. 2.08 to go in the second quarter. 10-7, I should say. That game, 2.08 left to go in the second quarter. Houston and Cincinnati, nothing, nothing. First quarter, Cincinnati has the ball. Chad Plummer will hit Robert Tate over the right side. Watch him dance into the end zone. Nifty little moves there that puts Cincy on top. 7-0 with that 15-yard reception. 
The Bearcats now lead Houston 14 0, 5 45 to go. Second quarter. Other scores from this day in college football in the Mid American. Ball State on top of Bowling Green 9 7. Just before halftime, Eastern Michigan on top of Central Michigan 14 10. 8 48 to go in the second quarter. Ohio and Kent State. Ohio trying to run its record to 4 and 3. Ohio, uh, Kent trying to get to 3 and 4. And the Bobcats lead the flashes 14 0. Army on top of Tulane. Army trying to run their record to 6 and 0. What a season they are having. Well, coming up next in the GMAC halftime report, we'll take a look at the number one Florida Gators. They're going against number 16 Auburn. Kirk Herbstreet and Lee Corso will join us with some inside. Stay with us. Gatorades. And we welcome you back to Penn State where the home team has a six point lead at the half. We had about three inches of rain over the past oh, 24 hours or so and we figured that the weather would be a factor. Indeed it was. The running game was very much a factor. Yeah, we talked about Tavian Banks and uh, Curtis Enos at the top of the show and that the weather would make them really have to carry the load. And they did a great job in the first half, certainly carrying the ball for lots of yards for both teams. Last thing in the world we expected in this kind of weather were big plays, and that's what we had plenty of. Oh, yeah, especially for Iowa. You know, Tim Dwight has been the man of the moment for them. He got them into the ball game early on when they were down by seven points. And then he got on, off on his way on an 82-yard punt return that he takes in for a touchdown, showing great speed on the outside. And then when Iowa needed something else from him, he came up big on a third and 37. He connected up with Matt Sherman for a 65-yard completion that put Iowa in position to score once again. And for Penn State, the big play guy was Aaron Harris, the guy in the backfield, number 25, will play a little bit of basketball out here on the sideline. He'll dribble this one, pick it up, and race 49 yards into the end zone for a touchdown, which takes us to the 20 to 14 halftime score. And it's a good thing that Tim Dwight plays for the Iowa Hawkeyes or they'd be in a heap of trouble today. He had one pass reception for 65 yards on third and or first and 37. And then two punt returns, one of them for 82 yards in the touchdown. He has been very much the player of the day for Iowa. And the running backs, Curtis Enos has certainly done his job, but Aaron Harris has busted a couple. One for 49 yards, another for 47. You saw the highlight with uh, Rodney just a moment ago where he fumbled it, and lo and behold, went right back into his hands. So here is Iowa, first possession of the second half. Damian Robinson gets it back to the 20 yard line. And statistically, in the first half, it was pretty much all Penn State. Almost a three to one margin on the ground. Iowa had more yardage through the air. And of course, the big play to Tim Dwight. Penn State by five minutes and 20 seconds. Yeah, look at that advantage. rushing yardage there you're talking about. That 186, Charlie, that's huge. And that penalty. Late in the first half that allowed Penn State a second try at a missed field goal has given Penn State the six point lead. Here is the first play of the second half. Tavian Banks brought down by Kim Herring at about the 23, second and seven. But Charlie, keep in mind that defensively, Penn State is very good in the third quarter, particularly on first drives. So far this season, no team has scored on Penn State on their opening drive in the third quarter. One other thing to keep in mind for later in the game, Iowa all season long has given up just three points in the fourth quarter. And Penn State leads by six as we begin the second half. Avian Banks to the 25. Just a couple. Third and five. You know, Iowa is pretty good up front, too. We talk about Penn State's offensive line. Well, Hayden Fry is certainly pleased with his offensive line, particularly on the right side when Derek Rose and Jeremy McKinney start getting it going. They can be as effective as Verba is on the left side. They tend to run to Verba a little bit more because he's more experienced. He's got pro potential. But Derek Rose is not a bad right side guard either. Third down, five yards to go. Banks and Berger in the I formation. 
Sherman's going to throw for it. Has a lot of time. Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. Matt Fornado, number 99, knocked it down. Well, quarterback likes to have enough time to try and complete a pass. Matt Sherman got great protection this time. Look at what the offensive line does. Look at the nice job by Rose, 64. Plenty of time. McKinney does a nice job out there. Sherman had all day, and he had his man there, Banks. But you saw the pass get knocked down on the right side by Matt Fornato. So the Big Ten's leading putter, Nick Gallery. It's a high beauty off. Chris Campbell. Brought down from behind at the 42-yard line. Chris Campbell with a 12-yard return following the 45-yard punt by Gallery. So here's Wally Richardson trotting on to the field for the first series of plays in the second half. And he's had his troubles directing his team to a first possession score in the third quarter. Starting third quarter is only one out of seven times as Penn State marched down the field, Charlie, and put points on the board. And for the first time in about 24 hours, it has stopped raining here. Yay! Curtis Enos gets nothing. I think Penn State's going to have to throw the ball on first down. That's probably the only way to try and get Iowa out of this defense where they're bringing eight guys in the box up near the line of scrimmage to stop Curtis Enos on the first down run. So I think the adjustment for Penn State, throw it on first down, and then go back to your running game on second down. The you offensive see. coordinator for Penn State is Fran Gentner in his 26th year here. Graduated in 71. Never luck. Robinson is lucky to get away. He is snowed under by Brett Chambers. Well, that's got to be somewhat distressing for Penn State. Iowa did not blitz. They used their front four. Four men in on the blitz that time. Not much of a blitz, just four-man pressure. And they couldn't protect Wally Richardson. And if Iowa can bring that kind of pressure without blitzing, Penn State could have trouble in the second half. Third and 11 at their own 42. Enos is the deep back. Richardson to throw. Sideline. And it's complete to Jonas Tassi at the 37-yard line of Iowa at a first down. Well, and he beat a pretty good corner that time. He's working on Tom Knight down here on the bottom. And you'll see there's deep help over here on the corner. So what Knight wants to do is stay underneath. The open area is right here. And watch the route that he runs there. You'll see Nastasi do a good job of working to the open area. He'll work back outside of Knight. Knight gets too close to him. He doesn't stay underneath him. And Richardson drops it right in there. Jurevicius and Nastasi flanked out to the left side. He's got a pass to the left side. An incomplete intended for Enos coming out of the backfield. Nearly the one-handed catch. Well, and there you saw the adjustment. Iowa coming with first down blitz as Penn State goes to the passing attack. And the passing attack with Curtis Enos coming out of the backfield, expecting him to be one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. Good adjustment by Penn State. Now it's up to this man right here, the defensive coordinator, Bob Elliott, for Iowa to counter that. He was Phi Beta Kappa. He's got the ability to counter. Jurevicius is flight way out to the top of the screen. There he is. Second and 10 at the 37. That's Nastasi in motion. Gonna hand it to Enos. Couldn't find a hole and maybe gained a yard. Mike Adam Lee. Well, Charlie and Rod, we know that Orlando Pace from Ohio State can play both offense, defense. How about Charles Woodson of Michigan? Number two is really a cornerback here on the flank reverse. Watch these moves, folks, and then he turns on the speed. 48 yards in all for Charles Woodson. Michigan, Indiana tied at 17, and Deion Sanders, eat your heart out. <laughs> What's up with all the two-way players? I was just thinking of Chuck Bednarik and what he must be thinking. Third and nine at the 36. The ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. It falls harmlessly to the wet side. It's fourth down at nine. Chuck Bednarik. Chuck Bednarik. Help me. Played with the Philadelphia Eagles. He was the guy who knocked Frank Gifford into the next uh, millennium with a hit back around 1960. That was about the year I was born. So I, I I'm going to smack you. <laughs> 
It is fourth and nine. <laughs> and Tim Dwight is standing deep. He's dangerous. Every time he's touched the ball, something interesting has happened. This time, he's going to let it bounce, and it is going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback. Close, but no cigar. Iowa takes over, first and 10 at their own 20, trailing by six. Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. They are Hale and Hardy Stock here in central Pennsylvania. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. Tavian Banks and Michael Berger are split. This is Banks. And Banks is brought down at about the 26 yard line by the right corner, Mark Tate. Yeah, we were talking about that offensive line for Iowa. You've got to be a pretty good offensive lineman to get out on a sweep like that. And we saw Bill Reardon, the center that time, pull out in front of Tavian Banks. And that's a long run, Charlie. That's about 20, 25 yards. All for about six. Second and four at the 26. Berger and Banks in the eye formation this time. Oh, boy. That was Tim Dwight in motion. This play is not going to count for a thing. And that is about the only thing Tim Dwight hasn't done correctly today. Would have been a great play in the CFL. Yeah, in the CFL, they allow you to start running towards the line of scrimmage before the ball is snapped. Can't do that in the continental United States. The referee today is Steve Newman, and he has been calling nothing but Iowa penalties. Six of them for 50 yards. And Peyton Fry can't be happy about that. Penn State has yet to be penalized. So instead of second and four, it is second and nine back at their own 21-yard line. Sherman calling signal. Finding Banks, and he loses yardage. Back at the 15-yard line, brought down by Brian Miller, the cornerback. Well, you're going to see a great play by Brian Miller on the outside. Basically, this is not a good play against this coverage because Brian Miller is coming up, taking care of the short area. He slips the block right there and comes up and makes a nice play. Hey, you know, we talked about him being an NFL player. He not only covers, he can tackle. Third and 14, back at the 16. And Sherman is calling a play on the fly. Sideline, nearly picked off, but it's complete to Damon Gibson at the 25-yard line. But it's well short of the first down, fourth down, and five to go. Well, how about that Penn State defense and their ability to shut down a team in the third quarter? Actually, they've been shutting teams down most of the season except for their game against Ohio State. Nick Gallery back at his own 15-yard line. All kind of drops at the 40 and out of bounds at the 34-yard line. A 40-yard punt and no return. Penn State takes over when we come back. We are back in State College, Pennsylvania, where finally the rain has moved on out and is moving east. Everly and Harris in the I formation for Penn State, first and 10 at their own 34. That's Nastasi in motion. And Everly with the ball. And Everly across the 35 to about the 39. Pick up of about five on the play for Chris Everly, a sophomore from Beverly, New Jersey. Charlie, you saw all the motion and shifting by Penn State that time. What they did was they wound up getting more blockers to the wide side of the field than Iowa had defenders. And that allowed them to run that play in there. When you have an out advantage like that, you can block everybody out and run some ball. Game six on the play. <laughs> and that is Fran Ginter. Offensive coordinator for Penn State. Keeping it 
conservative, and this time Aaron Harris is buried for no gain. Matt Hughes and Damian Robinson made the tackle, and that is Joe Paterno. And Joe Paterno has probably seen enough of Matt Hughes and Damian Robinson, and he knew they were good football players, but they've been all over the field for that defense of Iowa. Bill Ennis Inge, the 22 year old senior captain, Kirkwood, Missouri. Third down, about four. Out of the backfield, short of the first down. Everly with the catch, and they fall about a yard shy. You can't do it much better than that. I mean, when you're locked up one on one, with the back coming out of the backfield, you have got to make the play. And Jason that time, House Jason did. House was all over him, made a great open field tackle to keep Penn State from picking up the first down. Jason, big house. Jason is in the house. On fourth down and one at the 43, Darrell Kenya. High and short. White with the fair catch at the 25-yard line. Much more college football coming up later today on ESPN at 7 Eastern. East Carolina heads into hurricane country, taking on number 12, Miami. Pirates led by sophomore running back Scott Harley, and the Canes are led by quarterback Ryan Clement and receiver Magic Benton. College football, 7 Eastern on ESPN, the original. First and 10 for Iowa at their own 26-yard line. And Iowa is getting Penn State in a lot of too deep coverage. Look for Penn State and the Iowa to try to get the ball down the middle of the field. Time they hand it off to Tavian Banks and he gets nothing. Aaron Collins was in on the tackle. We talk about Aaron Collins, what a big family. He did a nice job of handling Verba on that play. You'll see 73 Verba try to block Aaron Collins, tries to cut him, but Collins does a nice job of staying off of him and getting outside to make the play. Collins is a guy who knows how to get to places in a hurry with a big family of 19, 18 siblings. He knows how to get to the dinner table. Well, he has to. 12 sisters, six brothers, and five of them have played for Joe Paterno. Second and 11 at 25. Banks buried by Brandon Short. That's one of those plays when offensively you come to the line of scrimmage, you need to make an adjustment and see that that man, Brandon Short, is coming into the backfield with nobody to block him. I mean, he's there right after the snap. Defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky has to be pleased with the play of his unit today, and especially Brandon Short. On third down and 16 at the 20. Jed Dole was the man in motion. Pass is complete to the 26-yard line to Chris Knipper. And for Knipper, that is his first reception of the day, but well short of the first down. So the defensive unit of Penn State holds again. And you get a sense the defensive unit is really getting its traction now. They're starting to take charge a little bit here. Here's Gallery's punt, sending Campbell back to his own 25-yard line. And down at about the 37, a nifty little run back of 12 yards for Chris Campbell. 20 to 14, Penn State. We are a little past halfway through the third quarter, and you're beginning to get a sense that Penn State is controlling the momentum of this game. At least defensively they are. First and 10 at their own 38-yard line. Richardson has time and now throws it away. Yeah. The intended receiver was Curtis Enos. The intended receiver now, Mike Adamley. Catch it, Mike. All right, Charlie and Madison, Northwestern trailing Wisconsin 16-14. Darnell Autry out of the game with a sprain right shoulder. Another, another Autry takes over, number 32, Adrian Autry. Up the middle, 15 yards. The Cats back on top after missing the two-point conversion, 20 to 16. With all those Autrys there at Northwestern, they're back in the saddle again. Second and 10, Penn State at their own 38-yard line. Automatic being called. 
called by Wally Richardson. Enos gets nothing. Well, you see there's nothing there with the running game. It's really going to be up to Wally Richardson to kind of step up for Penn State and do something. You see his numbers on the game, 7 out of 20 for 84 yards, only 2 of 6 in the second half for 23 yards. And we talked about how it's been a more frustrating season for him because of the inexperience in the offensive line and the wide receivers, Charlie. Maybe his best year when he looks back on his career was his junior year. It's nice when you have somebody like Bobby Ingram to throw to. And down he goes. Matt Hughes again. There's not a lot you can do when you're on your back, and Matt Hughes is great at putting players on their back. You'll see him come right up the middle on a blitz. Penn State was not expecting it. He's going to come right up there with a little stunt game. You'll see him show up right now untouched, and he's right in Wally Richardson's face. On Richardson's back, his views was Hughes. Sorry, right, as best I could do under the circumstances. I'll let it go. Thank you. <laughs> Got some running room, Demo Odoms still on his feet, and finally down at the 30-yard line. Iowa so desperately in search of a big play. May have just gotten the one that gets them jump-started in the second half, a 38-yard punt. A 32-yard return. And he does a lot of it by himself. Watch the moves. Little shift left, right, and then he gets to the outside. Now watch down here. Look at the man who holds up and does not make the block in the back. And D uh, Demo does a nice job of continuing on and working it down the field. So now Iowa is in business at the Penn State 31. Demosthenes Odoms the third. Demo. He had two drop passes and a fumble in the first half. Makes up for it a big way in the second half. Tavian Banks gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Gerald Filardi is there to meet him. I think that was something uh, blown. I think he wanted to throw that ball, but he looked down the field, and there was no one down there. I think someone blew an assignment as to where they were supposed to go. So Demo Odoms is supposed to go back onto the field after he catches his breath on that 32-yard punt return. Second down and 11 to go for Iowa. At the Penn State 32. Can you say Tim Dwight? He's in the slot to the left. And off to Banks running right. To the 30, a gain of just a couple. It'll be third and eight. Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator for Penn State. Uh, he was very concerned about Iowa's passing attack, and with good reason. Matt Sherman threw for 374 yards last season against his squad and put up 27 points, and he figured that 27 points by Iowa today would really doom his team. Third, let's call it nine yards to go. Sherman with a long drop. Throwing long for Dwight. Incomplete. Sean Lee was on the coverage, but Dwight was out there. And the ball got there a little bit late. It hung for a while, but he still should have made the catch. Watch how long this ball is in the air. He's waiting for it. He almost comes up with it. Sean Lee does a nice job of not giving up and getting back there, getting his hands in there to disrupt the catch. Sean Lee from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. This will be a field goal attempt of 30, 48. Make it 48 yards from the 38-yard line. Brian Hurley is blocked. It's loose, and Penn State takes over inside the 40-yard line of Iowa. And Brandon Short was the man who got in there to knock it down. And having the ball roll that far back into Iowa territory sets up Penn State in good position.
right, right down the, the middle. middle. Yep. Yeah. Brandon Short comes right up the middle. Gets his hands on it. Brandon Short has had a whale of a game defensively for Penn State. As the Lions take over first and ten at the Iowa 40. They lead by six. 2.20 to go third quarter. That's Mistassi in motion. Richardson overthrows Aaron Harris down at the 20. But well, Wally Richardson did the right thing that time. He threw the ball over the head of his receiver. The fans were a little bit upset. They thought there was some pass interference down there. Plez Atkins got a bump on Enos, and Joe Paterno was upset about it, but the ball was not in the air when the bump occurred. Second down and 10. Penn State just inside the 40 yard line of Iowa. Everly and Harris in the backfield. And Everly is thrown for a loss by Jared DeVries, number 94. Is that a big play or what? I mean, Penn State is starting to get pushed back now. The Iowa defense is starting to assert itself. DeVries is over here. He's going to show up in the backfield and make the play. I'm sorry, he's on the other side. He comes from the left side to the right side to make the play. He's a guy with very good feet. It was a tight end and a running back in high school. Third down, 15. <laughs> Richardson throwing. Incomplete. Intended for Juravicious. At the 35 yard line, so it's fourth down and 15. Tom Knight defends the play, number eight. Yeah, he, he's a heck of a corner. This is a guy who picked off a pass last week, took it 57 yards for a touchdown. He's one of the better corners in the Big Ten, one of the better ones in the country. Look at him all over Juravicious there, makes the move to get in there and knock the ball out. Here's the guy that's going to play on Sundays as well. Darrell Caney to put it away. Tim Dwight back in his own 10. That's good punt. That's going to bounce, however, into the end zone. Iowa takes over first and 10 at their own 20. But first, here's Mike Adamley. Mike? Charlie and Rod, a player you've had the pleasure of watching this season. Number 20 for Kansas, June Henley, busting across. This keeps Kansas in the ball game. They trail Colorado 17-7. The Buffs have won eight straight on the road. Glenn Mason having a much more difficult season than I think he expected. Yeah, Kansas was cruising early on. And their fortunes started to change after they ran into that bus on Utah. 20 to 14, Penn State leading Iowa with a minute and 21 seconds to go in the third quarter. Tavian Banks, he's got some room down the sideline. He's still on his feet. He's out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Man, that was close. Watch the pulling center, 63 Reardon. He's going to get the seal off block right in here, escorting his man inside. Actually, he doesn't hit anybody. It looked like he kind of shielded people off. He doesn't hit anybody out there, but look at Tavian Banks. He does step out of bounds. By just that much. Yep, 18 carries, 86 yards. First and 10 Iowa at the 43. Cedric Shaw, the all-time leading rusher for Iowa, has not played a down today. It's been all banks. Sherman's pass incomplete intended for Knipper, the tight end, second and 10. Well, Brandon Short was all over him, putting the pressure on. And Brandon Short is a guy who's playing on the end right now, but next year they're going to move him to the middle linebacker. That's his natural position. Look at him come on in and give the shot to Sherman. It's a big guy. Goes at 6'3", 240. He was a player of the year in Pennsylvania back in 1994 and has stardom written all over him. Second and 10. Iowa at their own 43. Sherman calling signal. An audible. Sideline. It's complete to Demo Odoms. Who, but he's out of bounds. They call it incomplete. And offensively, Iowa has been struggling in the second half. They've only picked up one first down in this half, which just occurred on Tavian Banks' run. Now they're going to be faced with a third down 
And you have to wonder what they're going to come up with in the coach's booth. That's Don Patterson, who is being obliterated by one of the assistants in front of him. Two of ten on third down conversions today. 0 for 4 in the second half. Sherman has had trouble completing passes. Had a lot of drops, too. That's Dwight in motion. Flag on the play. Two flags on the play. Pass over the middle is complete to Michael Berger. That will be just about a first down if the play stands. That is a big if, however. Well, I think they got Tim Dwight turning upfield before the snap. I think you're right. That's the second time Dwight has been called on a motion penalty. So Iowa has been killing itself on penalties today. And as you mentioned earlier, that has been uncharacteristic of them this season. They had a problem with it last year. Illegal shift against Iowa. Five-yard penalty. And that would be uh, Tim Dwight, who made his cut toward the line of scrimmage a little too quickly. And you saw the graphic there, seven penalties for 55 yards. Not good. Third down and about 15. Banks and Berger line up behind Sherman. And another automatic. Over the middle, it's incomplete. Intended for Demo Odoms, defensed by Aaron Collins. Mike Adamley. Charlie to Ann Arbor we go, and you're looking into the eyes of Michigan quarterback Scott Dreisbach, his team tied with Indiana 17-17, who Scott looked for a great play action fake up top to tight end Jeremy Tooman. Michigan takes the lead 24-20. So Indiana's keeping it close, a lot closer than Michigan thought they would, and that's a heck of a punt by Nick Gallery, sending Campbell back to his own nine. And he's able to bring it back to about the 24-yard line where Wally Richardson and the offensive unit of the Penn State Nittany Lions come on to the field. Well, Wally Richardson had a tough act to follow here at Penn State with Kerry Collins. You see him when he was at Penn State 92 to 94, Charlie. And these days, he's calling Carolina home. Not a bad quarterback in the NFL. You see him dropping a nice touchdown pass there just the way he did it at Penn State. And he thinks so highly of Penn State that he donated $250,000 to the athletic department to fund the quarterback scholarships for the future. There is something to be said giving back to the university. And Collins has done that. Venus. 27. Pick up with maybe three on the play. That was probably the last play of the third quarter. For Joe Paterno and his Penn State Nittany Lions, they will enter the fourth quarter leading by six points. But remember, as we come back, I was given up only three points in the fourth quarter all year. I love an ice cream. Charlie Steiner and Rodney Gilmore, we welcome you back to State College PA and the home team leading Iowa by six. This is the first play of the fourth quarter. Handoff is to the up back. A gain of about six on the play for Aaron Harris. Mike Adamley. Charlie and Rod, another lead change up in Madison, the fourth of the game. This time, Wisconsin jumps back on top, courtesy of the seven-yard touchdown run by the big fullback, Ron Dane, 23-20, Badgers. Rodney and I had the pleasure of doing Ron Dane's first game in college football, and I remember saying, folks, you're seeing something special here today. He really is. Yeah, we knew him when. And so is Curtis Enos, but not this time. Enos is brought down at the 30, a loss of about four on the play. Yeah, he's so special that he attracts a lot of attention here. Once again, Iowa coming with the first down blitz. You'll see him right here. He was up the middle and also 
getting some help from his running mate Vernon Rollins, also in the backfield, number 56. Iowa rolling the dice on first down, daring Penn State to throw the ball on first down. Second and 14. Enos, five carries in the second half, and has yet to gain a yard. Well, they're going to throw it this time to Jurevicius. And Duravicious gets back to the line of scrimmage, and really that's about all. Aaron Klein, the nose guard, made the tackle on the wide receiver. You know, we've got a very popular play in college football now, and that is the wide receiver screen. Bring him back inside, let your lineman block for him, because you can do that now. You can block before the ball is thrown. Watch him here, comes right back in. You got a little pick down here to get the corner off of him. Duravicious catches the ball. Nice tackling by Iowa. They were prepared for the play. Third down and nine. Enos and Harris behind Richardson, and he's in trouble. The ball is loose, and I think Iowa's got it. They do. Jared DeVries made the recovery, I believe, but I think the big hit it's going to come from 15 carry cooks. He comes in high from the outside and makes a big hit up top, knocks the ball loose. And once again, Iowa rolling the dice, coming with the blitz. Penn State not able to handle it. And carry cooks with a big play. This is Iowa's second foray into Penn State territory in the second half. And last time they came with a trick play right after the big play. Let's see if they do it now or they look for the man, Tim Dwight, who's been the savior for them all day. Dwight is flanked to the top of the screen. First and 10 at the 32. Halfback pass is complete. Down to the 10 yard line and Demo Odoms. Well, we talked about it, Charlie. That's the same play they ran when they had the big turnover in the third quarter. Penn State was not prepared for it. This time the receiver is Demo Odoms. You'll see again, once again, it's the halfback option pass. Lays it out there. Odoms does a nice job of fighting his way off of Miller. Picks up 24 yards on the catch. Rob Fee, a freshman running back from Iowa City, through the pass. That's the first time we've seen him this year. First and goal at the eight. Tavian Banks scores! Tavian Banks for eight yards. Filet sandwich. Try one today. So Iowa regains the lead, 21 to 20. 12:49 to go in the game. Brian Hurley, the lead-footed kicker for Iowa. Uh oh, that's going to be trouble. But Cordell Mitchell will alertly put one knee to the turf. 19 carries, 94 yards today for Tavian Banks and two touchdowns. Anatomy this was his second. Anatomy of a touchdown play. Watch the block here by Rochelle. He's going to push his man out. But then watch the big block by Berger, the fullback. He's going to get a nice big block right in the middle, right there on Phil Hardy, And that opens a huge hole for Banks to basically walk through. Charlie, you could have scored on that one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A safety has just been called against Penn State. Let's watch the play again. Joe Paterno is beside himself. Well, he touched the ball in the field of play. Now he's got to bring it out. He has to bring it out. He touched the ball in the field of play. He's got to bring it out. He did not. Ball is not possessed in the field of play. It just touched. 
then recovered as a kick in the end zone, which makes it a touchback. My error. So he didn't have possession of it. Well, let's look at it again one more time. Joe Paterno breathing a, an enormous sigh of relief. Well, initially, the officials ruled that he had the ball, and he lost the ball and went back in the end zone. That would have been a safety. But since he never had possession of it, it's nothing more than an accidental toucher, if you will, and so you don't have to bring that one out. But if you had possession of it and then lost it in the end zone, you would have had to bring it out. Looked like Bill Buckner. <laughs> oh, the Red Sox fans don't want to be reminded of that one. Billy Bucks, first and ten. Penn State at their own 20. They trail now by a point. Anemic offense for Penn State in the second half. They've rushed the ball 10 yards and still are 10 times and still looking for its first yard. Richardson's in trouble. Gets out of trouble and gains about three on the play. Well, you don't have to tell Wally Richardson anything twice. And he didn't take the sack that time. He scrambled. He made something happen after the play broke down. Usually, he kind of sits back there and he'll throw the ball away. But this time, he picked up positive yardage. That's a great play for him. He's a very smart quarterback. Second down and seven at the 23-yard line. The clock continues to run. And off. Aaron Harris across the 35 and down to the 38-yard line. Mike Adamley. Well, in Madison, after Pete Monty picked off a Northwestern pass, the Badgers behind that big offensive line. Cecil Martin scores. It's 30 to 10. If the Cats come back, remember, they have to do it with Darnell Autry out of the lineup with a sprained right shoulder. Maybe this will be the week Wisconsin finally gets itself back into the top 25. They've been close. At the 38-yard line, it's first and 10 for Penn State, trailing 21-20. And they haven't done much offensively here in the second half. Harris breaks a tackle, and he nearly burst that one. But Damian Robinson saved what could have been a very big play. And Harris really took a pop, and he is not getting up now. He is, but no, he's man, not. now he's going back down again. He oh. really got nailed. Oh, man. Damian Robinson came in and really, really lowered the boom on Harris, who's had... 10 carries for 135 yards. Harris broke a tackle on that play and was standing straight up as he came up in the middle. And Looks Damian like Robinson really lowered the boom. He's going to be okay. Those are two exceptional football players whose names we have called a lot today. Aaron Harris at number three, Damian Robinson. Yeah, now you see him slip a couple of tackles there. Even Hughes can't handle him. Watch the big hit right now. You see the way Damian Robinson sent him backwards? Snapped him pretty good. Ooh. Robinson's okay, and so is Harris. On second down and six, Enos is flanked to the bottom of the screen. Jason Slode is the only back, and Richardson had a dump it. He was in big trouble. There was Bill Ennis Inge in his face. Yeah, Ennis Inge put all the pressure on him. Nice job by Ennis Inge coming in. There you see Harris is looking like he's ready to come back in the ball game. But Ennis Inge has played a tremendous ball game today. He's a guy who's had to overcome an awful lot. Lost his father last spring to a heart attack. And then his uncle, whom he was very close to, drowned this past September. Ennis Inge was very close to both of them. A deeply religious young man and a terrific football player. On third and six, Richardson is buried. And the ball is loose. But referee Steve Newman says it stays here. Well, Hayden Fry is upset, and I think he has a good reason to be upset. It looked like Wally Richardson was trying to do something with the ball, and then he got it knocked out at the end. Let's see if this is a fumble. Well, you know what the official is ruling there? He's ruling that he made some attempt to throw the ball. And you always give the benefit of the doubt to the quarterback. That's the official's guideline. So it is fourth down. And Darrell Canty is going to put it away. Didn't get much that time. Floats out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Iowa's got the ball in pretty good field position and a one-point lead. 
10 minutes, 36 seconds to go in the game. Iowa with a one-point lead, 21-20. Hawkeyes have the ball, first and 10, at their own 38-yard line. Berger and Banks in the I formation behind junior quarterback Matt Sherman. Here's Tavian Banks. Banks finds a seam across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Coming up later this afternoon on ABC, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. The Trojans of USC pay a visit to their red-hot rivals at Arizona State. Ohio State heats up the hash marks at Purdue. Nebraska battles Texas Tech and Georgia Tech tries to tame the Clemson Tigers. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station, and the game's available from your cable operator later today. Fabian Banks, the junior from Bettendorf, Iowa, needs one more yard to burst into triple figures. Second down and five at the 43. Banks, well, he'll go over 100 yards just barely. Mike Adamley. Charlie and Rod in the wild, wild, whack. Wyoming undefeated this season, going back up on top of Fresno State. Len Sexton, the running back here, with his third touchdown of the game. It's 21-14, Cowboys. Ride them, Cowboys. How about them, Cowboys? Same score here, Iowa, coming from behind here in the fourth quarter. Remember, Iowa has given up only three points all season in the fourth quarter. Third down and three. Sherman turns it up. He's not going to make it. Yeah, he's not shy about sticking his head in there that time, though. Brandon Noble was the man in there making the tackle, and Aaron Collins, number six, was also over there. But Matt Sherman doesn't hesitate to put his head down and try to pick up a first down. It is fourth down, and Nick Gallery, the leading punter in the Big Ten this year. It's low, it's going to bounce, and it's going to bounce inside the 10-yard line. Down to the bout, the nine by Damon Gibson. Yeah, he probably should have let it roll a little bit more. He had plenty of time to down that ball. He was only at the 10-yard line, and it didn't look like it was heading into the end zone. But Nick Gallery is pleased with his punt. Yeah, watch the end of this play. That ball isn't going too, too isn't going anywhere. He has plenty of room. He thinks he's near the goal line, which is why he jumped on it. He didn't realize he had five more yards to play with. So Penn State now has the ball first and ten at their own nine-yard line, and they really haven't done much at all offensively here in the second half. Jason Slow to the up back. Curtis Enos has the ball, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Well, Iowa is really putting Penn State in a bind because they're blitzing again on first down. Here you see defensive coordinator right there, Bob Elliott, a former All-American defensive back here for Iowa. They're blitzing on first down, taking away the running game, daring Penn State to throw. Penn State's running on first down, getting nowhere, and they have to throw on second down. Second and ten. He misses the tailback. Richardson to throw. Long. Incomplete. Juravicious, the intended receiver, but every step of the way was the free safety, Damian Robinson. And the way Bob Elliott was raving this week about Damian Robinson, what he considered to be the well, there he is, best right free there. safety in the country. Well, there he is. Watch how he reads the quarterback eyes. He knows where the play is going. He's just loose out there, and he goes out there and then just gets in front of Jura Vicious so he can't make the play. Damian Robinson playing a whale of a game today. And Bob Elliott closes to your picture there. Here's Richardson throwing, and it's complete to Jura Vicious. Out to the 19-yard line, very close to the first down. They're going to mark it at the 20, and that was a lucky mark, it appears. Yeah, generous spot here. Watch Juravicious against Atkins one-on-one, -on -one. works to the inside. Good coverage, but he's such a big guy, and he can get the ball in there to him. I don't know that he was at the 20-yard line at any point in time, but he gets a good mark. First down, Hayden Fry isn't happy. That was a questionable mark to be sure, but Penn State has a first down at their own 20. 
Bertazinas and Jason slowed in the I formation, and that is the stop the in motion. Bertazinas to the 25. Well, Penn State's adjustment to the blitz by Iowa on first down is to run a draw play. They don't want to throw the ball on first down. They aren't really comfortable right now having Wally Richardson drop back the pass under his own goal post. They've had the ball knocked out once and almost a second time, so I think they're a little bit concerned about their ability to control the football when they're throwing it. Six minutes and 50 seconds left in the game. Both teams each have their three timeouts remaining. The Stasi in motion is the top of the screen. Richardson's in trouble. Big trouble. Finally gets rid of it. Oh, it's incomplete. Intended for Jason Sloan. But that was also very close to being picked off. Also, there's a flag on the field. Yeah, bad things have been happening to Penn State when they've gone back to pass in the second half. Holding against Penn State. Wally Richardson has been under pressure all afternoon, particularly in the second half. He feels the heat from Ennis Inge again this time. There was a hold on the play, and now Penn State will be backed up inside their own 10. Referee Steve Newman. Got to tell you what happened and why and whom and where. Holding on the offense. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul, repeat the down. And win. You talk about the Iowa defense and the Penn State offense. Just look, listen to this, Charlie. Curtis Ennis, 74 yards in the first half, 16 carries, 7 yards in the second. that he just burst everything wide open. Oh, one thing is great blocking up front. It was a trap play, and 64, Phil Ostrowski does a nice job of blocking from there. You see him show up right there, 64, big in the middle of your screen with a great block that opened up the middle of the field for Harris. Last week, Aaron Harris ran a touchdown home from 49 yards. Earlier today, he had a 49-yard burst. And then he had a 47-yard burst. It's still third down. And Richardson throwing sideline. Oh, it's incomplete. Juravicious nearly had it. And almost had the first down. Mike Adamley, sir. Charlie, the Wildcats of Northwestern keep getting off the artificial surface at Camp Randall. Back they come. Seven minutes left in the game. Adrian Autry scores. Northwestern within three. A lot of time remaining. That's a pretty good ball game. Well, I'll tell you what, the Big Ten has just been terrific all year. Got Northwestern at 3-0, Ohio State and Iowa 2-0, Penn State's 2-1, Wisconsin 0-2 in the Big Ten. They're playing well. Here's the punt. And Demo Adams returns it across the 40 to the 41. Iowa still leading by one. The Hawkeyes leading by one. 5.46 left in the game. Iowa's got the ball. First and 10 at their own 41-yard line. Tavian Banks, the deep back. Gets nothing, maybe loses a yard on the play. Matt Fernadel, the junior left tackle from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, made the play. Uh, Charlie, this is a real tough situation for Iowa's offensive coordinator, Don Patterson. Hayden Fry's got to help him try to figure out what do you do here? Can you bleed the clock, or is your defense playing so well you don't mind punting the ball? And he's right there. There's Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator for Penn State. Need to get the ball back. Second and 11 at the 40. Banks gains about six on the play to make it third and five. Mark Tate, the right corner, came up to make the tackle. Big Eighth decision prime. here. Third down, big decision. Do you put the ball in the air or do you play conservatively, just try and run it, run more off the clock, and then try to pin them down with the punt? I think Hayden Fry feels like he needs to get the first down and he'll throw the ball here. Two legendary coaches. Third and 
five. Sherman got Tim Dwight the first down. And guess who? Tim Dwight. He has been a thorn in the side of Penn State all afternoon. A punt return for a touchdown, a 65-yard pass reception, and right now a key third down pickup, 12-yard gain to give Iowa a much-needed first down with four minutes and 13 seconds to go. And the clock continues to run. Both teams have their full complement of three timeouts left. Not for long. Demo Odoms and Tim Dwight are flanked down at the bottom of the screen. Hand off to the up back, Michael Berger. Maybe two on the play. Chris Snyder, the defensive left end, made the tackle. Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator for Penn State. All he can do now is scratch his head. Right now, Iowa wants to bleed time off the clock. 339 and counting. They'll keep running the football, forcing Penn State to use their timeouts. One point lead. Their defense is playing well. Hayden Fry just doesn't want a turnover right now. Second and nine at the 41. Banks and Berger split behind Sherman. Dwight in motion. Flags fly. Banks turns the corner. Another flag. There are one, two, three flags on the field. They're doing laundry. Man, they'll need the spin cycle as wet as this failed has been. Now again. Yeah, they got a legal shift on them once again. Well, the worst part of that for Iowa is that it stops the clock. And there's a holding call as well. So they'll probably take them back with the holding penalty, decline the first penalty of illegal motion, there are, in fact, four flags on the field. <laughs> You're right. Just to get the accounting square. <laughs> there, there are two of There's them. There's two. Right, right there. One, There's one two. there. You know. They're everywhere. There's another one. Yep. We got that one, too. We have multiple fouls. No kidding. We have offside on the defense which will be accepted and penalized five yards from the previous spot. We have a block in the back that's declined. I think he got that one backwards. He pointed to the offense and said offsides when he meant to point to the offense and flag him for illegal motion. He'll fix it. Well, those multiple fouls will confuse you every time. Anyway. It is second down and 14. Back at the 46. Tavian Banks. Gets back to the 37-yard line. It'll be third and about seven. Kim Herring made the tackle, the free safety. And Tavian Banks is running hard. Got a great block that time by Matt Berger. Stayed in the middle of the field, running the clock now, Charlie. Under three minutes to go. Time for the Penn State fans to start getting a wee bit nervous. They got to start using their timeouts. Tavian Banks, what a day. He has been the man in the backfield. Sherman with a lot of time, a lot of time. Now he's in trouble. Banks still on his feet. Very close to the first down, and he stays in bounds. He didn't pick it up, but now Hayden Fry has a very tough decision. Do you go for it on fourth down here, keep the clock running, try to pick up the first down, or do you kick the ball? He will have time to think about it, courtesy of Penn State taking the timeout. 21-20, Iowa. Brian Hurley is on the field for a 50-yard field goal try. Remember, he had one blocked earlier. Hash mark to the left. Ryan Driscoll, the backup quarterback. It's a fake. And it's incomplete. Michael Berger was the intended receiver. And, you know, I'm sorry. I don't get it. Yeah. You know, Charlie, if you're going to go for it, 
line up, and go get it. Go ahead, take a shot, run the clock, run in with your offensive line. You've been moving them a little bit, but when you do a fake here, you're not putting yourself in the best position. Penn State certainly was prepared for a fake. Penn State knew that they'd had one block before. I don't agree with that call. I think you either go for it or you kick the field goal. Dating back to 1992, Iowa has been unable to beat the big three. Maybe today's the day, but not based on that play. But perhaps based on this one, John LaFleur with a sack of Richardson back at the 20-yard line, and that's going to cause Penn State to use its second timeout. Well, we've talked about the inexperienced offensive line. Right now, it's hurting Penn State. Nothing fancy on that play. LaFleur just came on inside. Pressure also coming from the outside might have confused some of the members of the offensive line. John LaFleur with the sack wears number 55. His father, Dan, was an Iowa linebacker from 1972 through 1974. And Dan LaFleur wore number 55. Wally Richardson has been able to author some comebacks. Look at that, five fourth quarter comebacks in his career here. He'll need number six today if Penn State is going to remain ranked 10th in the country. Penn State has been just sprinting on a treadmill all day today. They just really have not been able to get any sort of traction. Second down and 19 at their own 24. Richardson steps up. And gets out of bounds at the 30. He picks up about 11 on the play. Run out of bounds by Vernon Rollins. Third and 12. Now less than two minutes to go. Well, the important thing now for Wally Richardson and Joe Paterno is to get the first down. If you can't get it, at least cut the distance in half so you have a shot on fourth down. Watch out. Pass is complete to Ennis. He's unable to get out of bounds, however, to the 38-yard line. It yeah. is fourth down and five at the 38. How about what Iowa has done? Bob Elliott, defensive coordinator, rolling the dice with a blitz in a situation that is awfully risky. If a guy slips down on this wet field, that's a touchdown for Ennis. But there he is. Meanwhile, Penn State has just used its last time out. A minute and 42 seconds to go. And they are fourth down and five at their own 38. Remember, they only have to get into field goal territory, and Brett Conway has a good, strong leg. And keep in mind that Iowa is willing to play it risky on defense. They are not playing a prevent. On that last play, they blitz, and that's risky when you have a guy like Curtis, e Curtis Enos who can catch a ball and make a guy miss. Right now, it's fourth down. All you need to do, if you get the man-to-man -man coverage, drop the ball off to Curtis Enos, maybe he can make a guy miss and pick up the first down for you. Fourth down and five. Penn State with the ball. No timeouts left at their own 38-yard line. And I think Iowa will come back with more pressure. And I think Wally Richardson has to be prepared for it. He's got to expect the blitz right now. And Richardson has had a long, cold, hard afternoon. 10 of 29. And here they come. This is the ball game for Penn State. That's Nastasi in motion. Iowa takes over on down. Joe Jurovicius was the receiver. He was open. The pass from Richardson was overthrown. 
We talked about the pressure. The pressure can make it tough on anyone. Look at all the guys that they have up here in the box. Nine of them. Man-to-man -man coverage here and a free safety. This is where he wants to go. They'll move it outside to get away from the pressure. Richardson doesn't get away from all the pressure, and he works on Jurovich is right now. He wants him. He wants him. He's covered by Plez Atkins. Can't get the ball to him. There's your ball game. Iowa has not beaten Penn State since 1983. Tavian Banks to the 35, and all Penn State can do is hope that Iowa can turn it over somehow. And all Iowa wants to do is hold on to the ball. But Charlie, now you have to start looking at that Big Ten race again and the national standings. Penn State will fall from number 10. Iowa is undefeated in Big Ten play along with Ohio State. And Northwestern is losing at Wisconsin. So Iowa would be tied. Presumably Ohio State wins later today at Purdue with Ohio State for first place in the Big Ten. And there are flags of flying and motion on the offensive line. And just when you thought you had it all figured out in the Big Ten and in the top ten, Dead you ball. have this happen. I'll start on the offense. I got a penalty. Talk about guys who've had career days, big days. How about that man, Tim, Tim Dwight. Dwight? With the big 82-yard punt return for a touchdown, a 65-yard pass completion, he has been a stud, and so too has Tavian Banks, the running back from Bettendorf, Iowa. 25 carries, 116 yards. And remember, the leading rusher in the history of Iowa football, Cedric Shaw, did not play a lick today with injuries. So it was Banks who did the job, and he's come up in a big way. The standings up to the minute, assuming, of course, this game ends as we expect it will. Iowa goes to 3-0. and Michigan State is 2-1. and one. Michigan State hosts Wisconsin next week. Wisconsin currently leading Northwestern by three at Camp Randall. And finally, for the first time since 1992, Hayden Fry will beat one of the big three teams in the Big Ten. And all Mr. Sherman has to do is what he just did. And Iowa will go home with a 21 to 20 win over the Penn State Nittany Lions. That's a bunch of happy Hawkeyes. And this is some game. Iowa beats Penn State 21 to 20. For Rod Gilmore, Charlie Steiner saying goodbye from Penn.